Time is now running at X minus 30 seconds. Time is now running at X minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, fire. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Willie Lay. Space travel is no longer a dream, nor just a setting for imaginative tales. These books are descriptions of things to come. They are factual, as correct as we can make them right now. With the launching of artificial satellites, the age of space has begun. Man has many questions about the nearby universe, which he wants answered. For example, is there life on Mars? What is under the cloud covers of Venus? What does the other side of the moon look like? Man has always wanted to rise out of his air ocean to see what space is like. And now he has taken the first step to make this ambition reality. But before man himself can undertake space travel, before he can explore new worlds, he must gather a great deal of information about conditions in space. He must be certain of the physical facts he will encounter away from the Earth. So he sends up mechanical messengers to send back the information. The most recent and modern of these is the satellite. The data gathered by the instruments orbiting around the Earth are used in our preparation for space travel. How such data are gathered is a story of organization, of communication, and volunteer contributions. The story you are about to hear has been long in the making. Months before the launching of any Earth satellite, civilian volunteers began planning and training for the parts they would play in our IGY Earth satellite program, sponsored by the National Academy of Sciences. Among these volunteers were the pilots and crewmen of the Civil Air Patrol. As a civilian auxiliary of the United States Air Force, the Civil Air Patrol participated in a program for training the volunteers against the advent of actual satellites. When it also became apparent that hundreds of volunteers would have to be trained to spot and track any Earth satellite, an ingenious procedure was initiated. To simulate a satellite orbiting at high altitude, they simply took a common household flashlight lamp and attached it to the suction end of the familiar household tool known as the plumber's helper. Two dollars worth of parts you can purchase at any hardware store. When this strange and unglamorous device, endearingly called the bug, is towed through the night skies behind a civil air patrol plane, it appears almost exactly like a real Earth satellite hundreds of miles above the Earth. All across the country, the volunteer Civil Air Patrol crews began flying training missions for their fellow volunteers of Operation Moonwatch. In more than a hundred isolated locations throughout the country, Moonwatch stations like this were set up by volunteer astronomers. And it takes the help of hundreds of volunteers the country over to collect the data which becomes available from a satellite streaking around the Earth in outer space. You may be wondering why all the excitement about the satellites. What it is we stand to gain from a mechanical ball flying around the Earth at nearly 18,000 miles per hour, carrying 18 pounds of scientific instruments and radio transmitters. The point is it can help 
to tell us more about the environment of space in which we hope to travel. From it, we can learn more about the sun's radiation, cosmic and ultraviolet rays, measure the Earth's magnetism, and other information useful in the construction of the first spaceship. Practically, too, later satellite information can serve to improve our weather forecasts, enable us to take photographs of our neighboring planets, serve as relays for global television, and as jump-off places for trips into deeper space. The first step in gathering such vital information lies in locating and tracking the satellite. The electronic ears of many track stations strain for the tone of the satellite's tiny radio transmitters. The indented eye of the precision tracking camera pierces the night sky to record the flight of the speeding satellite. And so professional joins volunteer in the exciting job of predicting satellite orbits. Suddenly, with the launching of Russia's Sputnik, the first IGY satellite, this exercise was jolted from the theoretical into the practical. This was a real opportunity to test our training. Now we could check our entire organization and our communication network for the tracking of Earth satellites. Here at the IGY Vanguard Computing Center in Washington, D.C., is the nerve center of that network. To it would come the bits of information from the Minitrack stations, the tracking cameras, the Army's microlock stations, and from the volunteer observers manning Operation Moonwatch sites. Here the data will be evaluated. Here is where the all-important orbital prediction will be made. But Sputnik also brought with it a serious problem to the men concerned with our IGY Earth satellite program. In fact, at first, it appeared to be an insurmountable obstacle. If the volunteers manning the scientific observation stations were to perform their jobs effectively, orbital predictions on the orbiting satellite had to be flashed to them from Washington daily. But communication was the principal problem and the weak link in our tracking network. The expense of sending commercial telephone or telegraph messages to more than a thousand tracking stations across the country each and every day was out of the question. Again, the Civil Air Patrol was called upon for assistance. One of the facilities maintained by the CAP is a well-disciplined nationwide communications network with 16 years of training behind it. Numbering 13,000 individual stations, both fixed and mobile, coast to coast, manned by qualified volunteer operators, the Civil Air Patrol could and would handle the job. The very next morning, CAP headquarters in Washington alerted its communicators. And within 24 hours after CAP assistance was offered, the first orbital prediction on the Russian satellite was transmitted from Washington, D.C. The message was received at the headquarters station of each of the 52 Civil Air Patrol wings, all 49 states, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and the District of Columbia. Immediately, CAP operators began rebroadcasting the orbital predictions to the squadron stations situated in each of the satellite observation point areas. In hundreds of communities all over the country, loyal citizens, from lawyers to school teachers, operating out of their homes, were alerted to establish the CAP network for the transmission of the tracking information. Civilians by day, uniformed volunteers by night, they generously lent their time and equipment facilities to the cause of Operation Moonwatch. Immediately, the all-important message was relayed to the waiting scientists. To some, the message was relayed by telephone. In some cases, CAP mobile radio cars were assigned to take the traffic and hand carry it to the Moonwatch or Phototrack station, which in many instances is located in isolated outlying areas. In still other instances, the local CAP unit set up portable communications right at the observation site. 
Thanks to years of training and preparation, the widespread communications facilities of the Civil Air Patrol were ready to take on this important job. These photo trackers got their pictures thanks to the satellite forecasts flashed to them by radio. What is the why of all this, you may well ask? Why is it so important that all units of our Earth satellite program function thoroughly and efficiently? The answer is that rockets and satellites open new perspectives for examination of the Earth, its air ocean, and the space beyond. Before the age of rocket research, man's knowledge of particle and radiation bombardment of the Earth and upper air was severely restricted by the modifying effects of the atmosphere. In pursuit of this evasive knowledge, scientists climbed mountains, loaded aircraft and balloons with instruments, devised elaborate ground equipment, Valuable techniques, of course, but primitive by comparison with the developments of our new interplanetary age. Rocket and satellite research will help to pull aside the veil, which since time began has obscured the true meaning of the stars. At 10.48 p.m. on January 31st, 1958, the U.S. Jupiter-C rocket launched the IGY Satellite Explorer 1 into outer space.